So you want to be Canadian? Well, I can help. First thing you need to know is, wait, can you even hear me from there? Sometimes it's better to be up close and personal. That way you can be a keener. Keeners are only in Canada. Other countries don't even know what a keener is. Whoops. Keener, qu'est-ce que c'est? Is that the type of shoe? Uh, no, 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 it's a pasta, like a cannoli. Ah, oui, oui. To be Canadian, you need to know that Keeners are super nerdy and brown knows whenever possible. If we continue to support the pipeline, there should be ample controversy to distract from the increase in raw log exports that we expect to push through later this year. Oh, oh, I can do a market study that compares the province of log exports to oil sales. That sounds like a good idea. Huh? Keener. Keeners aren't always the most popular nerds out there, but it's a Canadian term, and it's one way to add some A in your day. I'm Leon Davis, manager of the Nanaimo and District BCSPCA. Summer is here. Did you know that dogs often in the summer suffer burned paws from people walking them on hot beaches or hot sidewalks? So please, if you're going to take your dogs out, try and stick to cool, grassy areas. Did you know that the city of Nanaimo has a plan, a cultural plan for a creative Nanaimo 2014 to 2020? They do. It's very uh, thorough and uh, very informative. You can check it out for yourself on the city of Nanaimo website. And there's also uh, culture and heritage. It's who we are. It really is. It's about pride of place. It's about history. It's about the quality of life. And there's a 2014 year in review available online as well. There's people here putting forward their ideas on what Nanaimo needs to become even more culturally vibrant. We're going to throw things over now to Kelly Robinson. She has lots of reason to celebrate with the fine folks at the North Island Wildlife Recovery Association. Go interactive with me, Kelly. This is Oliver and he's a permanent resident here at North Island Wildlife Recovery Center. Julie, tell me a little bit about Oliver's story. So Oliver's one of our two glove-trained barred owls. Uh, he was actually raised at the center here after he fell from his nest um, and injured the tip of his wing. So he was raised here, doesn't have a full flight, so is a non-releasable bird. Um, so he's part of our education program now and meets and greets people on site and at different uh, events around the community. And you guys are celebrating 30 years. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, definitely. It's a really exciting summer. So uh, the place has changed and grown a lot over the 30 years. This whole area behind us here is brand new in the last year. Um, and it's changed over even the last 10 years, new buildings and facilities and, and all sorts of programs. So and it's uh, not just owls. No. No, it's any native wildlife on, on Vancouver Island. So everything from black bear cubs to um, owls to ducks to crows, ravens, um, songbirds. We, we do anything that's native to this area. And you guys have lots of different events planned for the 30th anniversary, but a big one on July 10th. July 10th is actually going to be a, a free admission day. It's our actual birthday, so it's a birthday party out at, out at the center. So lots of different things planned for that day. Um, but this whole summer is a celebration. Most Saturdays there's some special event going on um, and all the information's on our, on our website about what, uh, what special features we have um, each week going on. Awesome. Sounds like lots of fun. It should be. Words with Mayor McKay. A special Nanaimo City Council meeting was held on Tuesday, June 22nd, and it was an interesting one. We'll get to that. But first, Bill, why and when is a special meeting called? Special meetings are anything other than a scheduled meeting. So what happens is at the beginning of the year, we publish a schedule of council meetings. So anything other than that becomes a special things that need further discussion, there wasn't enough time to cover it at Correct. a regular meeting. Correct. So it can, it can be part of an administrative process that you call it, or it can be by will of council. So I could call a special meeting, or two members of my council could request that I call a special meeting. There were 10 delegations presenting to propose changes to the cultural funding program, and we'll get to those details in a minute. But first, there's nothing like culture to get people all riled up. Personally, I don't understand how someone can have any opposition to culture. It is our history, it's our values, it's our quality of life, it's our pride of place, but uh, each to their own, I guess. There were some very disruptive signs. You had to call security. 
I did. I asked them first of all, this is not the first time they've been to our meetings. Uh, I had to ask them to put their signs down. They refused to put their signs down. I asked them repeatedly to do so. Then when they refused, I said, gentlemen, I will have to ask you to leave. I have to order you to leave, which I did. They refused to leave initially and we had to call security and then the RCMP to have them removed from the chambers. Are you looking at further legal action or any legal action or is this perfectly within their rights to express themselves this way in a city council meeting? In fact it's not. A lot of people are of the mistaken belief that everyone has a right to uh, express themselves and they have freedom of speech but the courts have ruled very clearly that while they do have that right the other people in the room have a right not to see their messaging so they have limited rights with that respect as far as myself expelling them uh, the community charter is very clear that I, that the chair of the meeting has the ability to expel and it has the same weight as a as a court order okay and the ultimate uh result could be a banning, an outright banning. Correct. Okay. So, let's get to what the business at hand was, which were changes to the cultural funding program. Um, a lot of delegations, a lot of speaking on that. Where are we at with what those changes are and what does it mean? The, the, the whole process of revamping uh, the, the process was to try to give the impression and in fact in in real life that it's it's fairer that there's an appeal process in place um, and a better understanding of what, the, of what the qualifications are when applying for either a grant or an extended grant for a group that's been in uh, that's been in existence for a number of years. So for example, the Vancouver Island Symphony, they have a three-year granting process in order to give them certainty with other funders. Now, and there was some discussion about does that put certain groups uh, at a disadvantage if they don't have a proven sort of performance track record to apply under, but I'm sure that that's been addressed. In no, the in fact, they, anybody can apply. However, in order to get the three-year funding, you have to have been in existence and have a proven track record for at least four years. Okay. Excellent. Great.